Hello everybody, welcome back. This is Jonathan Gardner covering Sergey Lang's Basic Mathematics. And this is chapter 10, which uh, talks about parameterization and how we can start deriving formulas that relate X and Y to geometric objects using analytical geometry. So this is probably typically what you would get in an algebra course on lines, except it's kind of taught backwards from the, what I think is the more clear approach towards the uh, less the more, I, I don't know, mysterious approach, I guess, is the right word for it. Anyway, let's begin. What's a line segment? So let P and Q be points in the plane, obviously. We're dealing in R2. We can write Q equals PA for some A. So Q is equal to P plus A for some A. So A is some point, right? We don't know what point it is yet, but there is some point that we can add to P. Remember from the last section, we talked about how to add points. We talked about how that's kind of like, that is vector addition. And we wish to give an analytical definition of the line segment between P and Q as shown in figure 10.1. So we have a picture here where we have point P and we have point Q. And then point A would be probably a point like right here. So point A would be the same distance I should have used a ruler or something, but the same distance and the same angle. So whatever that is, it'd be the same distance. Okay. And so next we can say that we can define the line segment, the, the piece of the line between points P and Q, of the line that passes through the points P and Q, to be the line segment is P plus TA, where T starts at zero and then goes all the way up to one. Okay, so Z goes, T goes from zero to one. T is just a real number. Uh, so the point halfway would be P plus one half. So this would be P plus one half A. Okay. All right. And there's an example for what happens between zero and uh, the origin and A. And then it says that this line segment, so if you can do the same thing, like you can say like uh, O plus one half A is this halfway point here. And if you translate all the points by P, then you're back to the parallelogram and everything like that. Okay. All right. So the definition of a line segment, PQ, is equivalent to the translation through P of the line segment OA. Right, we can write it that route that way as well. <clears throat> so the PQ, the line segment PQ is the image of the line segment OA translated under T, un translated th uh, from origin to P, that translation. Okay. So, why do we get A? Well, A would just be Q minus P. So A is equal to Q minus P, okay? So we can rewrite this as P is uh, P plus T times Q minus P. This is the line segment PQ, All right? All right, not much to do there. Uh, you can try to simplify this a little bit by saying it's one minus T times P plus Q. If you wanted to reorder order the symbols that way, or if you weren't so messy with my equal sign. <clears throat> so, um, but you can also see that this itself is a real. We can call that real S, right? And so we can see that the line segment is equal to S times P plus Q. Well, what's that? That's, you can think of that as a line segment QP, and so PQ and QP are the same. Not terribly complicated math here. He's just dancing around with the numbers. Um, Let's talk about the directed segment or the located vector. So directed segment or the located vector. Or the located vector. Typically vectors aren't bound to a point in space. When you do bind them to a point in space, they behave uh, like you'd expect. They behave like points, right? So in the directed line segment, the order does matter, right? We start at P. We have some point P, we have some point Q, and we do progress from P to Q as we do the directed line segment. And so we'll use the symbol P, Q, 
not with just with the line, but with an arrow on the end. So this typically um, is the notation you'll see for vector algebra. Here he's using it as a located vector that starts at P and goes to Q, right? Um, that's what it looks like when you draw it. We say that P is the beginning point. So P is the beginning and Q is the end point. Pretty obvious. Um, we say that the located vector is located at P. We say it's located at P. Right? If we did not locate it at P, it would just be a vector. And we also say that PQ vector is not equal to QP vector, right? Because the direction is important. The line segments were equal, but the vectors are not. The located vectors are not. All right, let's, and that's pretty much all there is for the first section. It's a pretty simple section. Uh, I don't know if there's much to wrap your head around other than, you know, we can move from point P to point Q um, by taking the difference between the two and just adding a real number between zero and one uh, times that. So that's pretty much all there is to it. Guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I'll catch you next time. Take care and bye bye. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. This is part of a series on Sergey Lang's basic mathematics. You can catch the playlist over here and you can find out how to support my channel over here. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Bye bye.